you well. Hi, Madam Mayor. Uh, so, Mr. Thread talked about the frustration of getting this road work done and some of those problems that y'all have encountered. Um, you combine that with the news of us now being the murder capital of the U.S. and basic services like garbage not happening uh, in many areas. What do you say to the people who are frustrated and calling for your recall because they see all of this as their experience in the city of New Orleans with high taxes still in place? Well, what I will say is that the challenges infrastructure improvements have brought forth are real. Uh, challenges that we have faced uh, in order to get the work done. Uh, coming in with one less than 1% of the money uh, spent towards this work, uh, notices pr to proceed not moving forward, and just bottlenecks and backlogs. It's something that we've had to deal with. And based on that work, uh, we have seen tremendous progress and uh, moving forward to ensure that not only we meet the deadline of the federal government to get the work done, but also it seems that we're moving in the right direction uh, to get the extensions granted that the city does need so that we can truly not only spend every federal dollar, but leverage it against the public dollar that the public voted on and approved in November of 2019 because the public understood the need to leverage, but also to go further in making these investments that have never happened in the city of New Orleans. And quite frankly, that isn't happening in any other city in the United States of America. So while I understand that residents can be frustrated and clearly understand that I can be too, but they should also know that we're laser focused on getting the work done and going the extra mile to do just that and being honest up front about what we're seeing and what it also takes to get done. But frustration is not the key. Being focused and not distracted is the key. And that is the type of leadership that we have in place. As it relates uh, to garbage and sanitation, you know just like me, sir, uh, that the contract that the city of New Orleans, and quite frankly, that I inherited as mayor, was signed in 2017. You also understand that the city of New Orleans was able to utilize uh, the contract provisions to hold the contractor accountable based on the lack of or adequate services that were being rendered in the city. That then allowed my administration to rebid that contract, as you also know. You know that this will be unprecedented, even with the type of service, quality equipment that this city will stand to gain from the new contractors that are being onboarded. Uh, Ivy Pro and Ivory, uh, Ivory Pro and waste management are something that we're looking forward to activating here uh, by November the 7th. Uh, so I would say it's one thing again to be frustrated, but it's another thing to look and see examples of progress that can happen overnight, but my administration and my team continue not only to be focused, but to continue to deliver on the needs that we know that our people need on the ground. As it relates uh, to you mentioned something else. I'm not sure if I remember it all. Murder capital. Okay, I, I do not embrace that at all. Uh, I don't embrace it because one, that is the, the, the data even used for that is more of a governmental uh, term for that. It's not based on what's actually happening on the ground in our community. And even as you look at comparisons to other cities throughout this country, you know, I turn to, I think what's in my mind is um, Labor Day weekend, for example. And when we woke up and we saw Labor Day weekend, the national media shining a spotlight on the dangers in cities over that weekend, you know, you saw Chicago, you saw Philly and the like, I mean, murders and shootings in no comparison to the city of New Orleans when we had seven and not only that, when we were hosting two national events in our city and we did that. 
So, you know, I'm thinking the about- rates in those places are lower than ours, significantly. The, when you think about our population and you also think about what we are dealing with, which is not immune to the city of New Orleans, we have experienced an uptick in violent crime, much like we see across the country. But we also see here locally those types of incidents that are occurring in our community or that have occurred in our community when you look at those murders that you talk about. Mostly all of them are aligned by people who know one another, not random at all. Mostly all are aligned with the challenges that families are dealing with relative to domestic violence. Mostly all are aligned with the mental health issues and, and lack of services that we know that we need in our community. But all align with a, uh, a real problem that we're having, our people are having with de-escalating issues, uh, able to kind of cool off before reaching for that handgun to take someone's life. So these are challenges that we do have, uh, challenges that we are working through, but in no way, in no way, as Blaine Kern said before he passes, Barry shared with me, you know, never bet against the city of New Orleans. So I do not embrace uh, the terminology, regardless of how it's used, I do not embrace it. But what I do embrace are resources that we're tailoring towards public safety. What I do embrace are resources and programs that this city is standing up that are seeing results. And what I do embrace is a team that's laser focused on meeting the needs of our communities and the challenges faced relative to public safety in the city of New Orleans. So you, Thank you, you very much. You do not much. accept the accuracy Thank of the all. statistics? I do not accept the yeah. title of this city being the murder, murder capital of the world. I do not embrace that at all. This city continues to demonstrate that we face challenges, that we embrace them, but we also stay focused on getting things done and embracing, again, uh, resources, partnerships that are needed to meet our people where they are. And we'll continue to do that. Yes. Mayor, the recall, the recall organizers okay. are holding news conferences at City Hall right now. Mm -hmm. another sort of counter campaign going saying no signs don't sign the recall mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. are, what, what do you say to that accusation first of all and are you behind this effort to try and get people not to sign the recall today? well first of all i am not intimately involved in any of the efforts uh, i'm focused on doing the work and doing the job i don't have time to waste this city doesn't have time to waste when we have windows of opportunity that are open and that will close. So what I do know from the efforts of both on the recall side, I know about that. And I've also seen uh, here recently the signs emerge um, in regards to don't sign. What I've experienced personally as I move across the city is again, nothing but love, nothing but support, and nothing but the, just the, the, the words of encouragement to keep going and to keep getting things done. And so what I've also experienced personally, you know, is just the, um, uh, that, like that level of support, uh, it just gives me the medicine that I need to stay focused. And I appreciate that. So I appreciate those who are on that side who recognize uh, the job isn't, isn't uh, uh, one uh, that anyone can do, uh, but definitely a job that I've stepped up to do and I continue to deliver every day. No further questions. I have a question if you don't mind real quick. Mayor, no it's, further questions. It's about the four together. I know a lot of people have been curious about the funds being, you know, frozen at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what I will say to that, and thanks to some investigative reporting, I know that Hammer, you've been doing, you've also discovered uh, that Forward Together New Orleans filled gaps uh, that were real needs in this community that no one else was filling. 
So in terms of what do people say, I can't respond to that. It's what I know. What I know is that Forward Together New Orleans raised millions of dollars and spent those dollars meeting people where they were in our community. From our Latino community that were in no way uh, uh, embraced when the CARES Act funding hit the ground, they were excluded simply because uh, there were immigrants in our community. That was something that we pushed back on. That organization stood up and was able again to provide resources to those families in our community. When formula for babies were not, uh, wasn't even provided or accessible at a national level, this organization stood up and again did what was necessary to meet people where they were, ensuring that our mothers and their babies were properly fed. When we talk about public safety and programming and the like, this organization, again, has been one that has done the work. When you think about workforce development and even the impacts of a global pandemic, this organization was front and center. So I will say, keep the investigations going because what they will do is clearly, clearly show that Money was raised, money was spent, meeting people where they were and are in the city of New Orleans. But will the learning earn? I know that none of the money was misused. Thank will the you. learn and earn kids get their stipend? Will the learn and earn kids get their stipend, Madam Mayor? Well, as soon as you, uh, I'm sure, hopefully finish up your investigation, because all of that has had an impact on the organization. So while you're asking me whether or not our young people will get their stipend, absolutely they will. But you know what? You're in between. You're in between that young person and that stipend that they deserve and they're putting in the work to receive. You're in between that. But I will say this, that we will continue to ensure uh, that we meet people where they are and organizations that have been stood up with solid, with a, with a solid foundation, meaning those board members, they'll continue to get that are work done. Are you accusing done. me of causing this to stop? I mean, I BIG gave anything. that subpoena, not I did me. Not, I did not accuse you, sir, of anything. What I did say is that you're investigating it. Are you not? Yes. Exactly. That's what I said. So as soon as your investigation, because you know how this works, when things are investigated, things stop right? But when we're able to clear that path after the investigation is over, that's when we will get back to the business at hand, meeting our young people where they are, because the needs are great. And I'm just looking forward to the day that we can just stay focused on doing the work. Mayor, okay. I'm, I'm a Whitmer Trust. Can you um, explain you why in 2020, we're done. Okay. in 2020, why did you um, agree to extend the Whitmer Trust into a private so the city of New Orleans, in regards to my administration, followed a suit, quite frankly, with the previous administration based on the work that had gone and also what was revealed based on that. And so right now, you know that uh, litigation is happening. I won't, I really won't get into the details of that, but, but you, you know, we've been here before in I this regard. But, I, but the policy decision in 2020 to agree to allow it to become a private organization was not anything that had happened before. So I want to know why it is that you chose to do that. Well, keeping in line again with making sure that the uh, the trust, uh, that, that those all tied to the trust, uh, where we could make sure that the city of New Orleans continues to benefit from that. Right now, there's nothing happening, which again, we're at a standstill. Organizations that depend on these resources are again in a position to not receive them in the future. We'll cross that bridge, but you know, active litigation is going on, and we'll deal with it accordingly. LBJ. Mayor, Mayor I want to get back to uh, sanitation for just a second, because we're the last month of, of yes. the deal right now. But we have heard some residents in different parts of town where that's going to pick up, and that seems to pick up as slow to a fall mm -hmm, in some mm -hmm. places. Uh, is there any chance that the other contract starts a bit early, or is there a remedy for these residents that are waiting over a week yeah. to now get the one pickup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing are continued challenges with capacity, both on the Metro side and the Richards side, quite frankly. Uh, we're working daily, not only with sanitation, but with that contractor um, to ensure that garbage is picked up. It continues to be a challenge. 
and that's why I'm looking so forward uh, to the new contractors being on board it's starting November 7th. You asked if they could start sooner. Oh my goodness, only if they could. They've had to utilize this time to proper hire up, uh, to purchase equipment and the like, so that they're able to deliver for the residents and for the city come November the 7th. Again, we're looking at services uh, and equipment that this city has never seen before. We're also looking uh, forward to a robust recycling program coming back. Also looking for our residents having multiple cans, you know, at their disposal. So the best is yet to, to come. Uh, the, the, I would say we can see the end coming uh, to the lack of services in this regard. Uh, and I'm, it's something that, again, I'm looking forward to. Well, what we will do, the city has to do, is one, look at uh, the provisions uh, that are in the contract and absolutely hold uh, the contractor accountable to that. Uh, and much like we had to do on the Metro side, uh, we're, we'll be able to move forward uh, as relates uh, uh, to the second zone. So work still in progress there. So in regards, um, in regards to that, and here recently, and I believe, So, so it's really more respectful when you say which council members, because we don't say all reporters right. or all right. media. Right. Some right. Well, it gets pretty, you know, it gets it gets pretty dangerous uh, when you're talking about um, someone's uh, revenue or wages that they earn by doing the job. Okay, and there's no question at all uh, based on my work, my work ethic, and me getting up every single day, doing the job, and going the extra mile. Uh, as it relates to the travel expenses, nothing, nothing aligned with being luxury at all, but absolutely aligned with my health and well-being, in which I'll stand on all day long. Uh, I am not the woman in the council chamber. I'm the woman in the arena. And so whatever I need to do my job and to deliver for the citizens of New Orleans, I will continue to do. What I have done and what I will do moving forward, although we're still in the midst of the declaration, you know, relative to COVID-19, I have now resumed my practices pre-COVID relative to uh, my travel and my seat assignment. So what I will say is that, again, it's very dangerous when you start uh, to talk about docking people's wages based on the work that they do, and clearly that I've done, and the fact that we're able to have mid-year budget adjustments. Looking forward to how we apply the second allocation of American Rescue Plan dollars. Looking at revenue generating throughout the city of New Orleans in terms of how we move through this pandemic is all tied to and aligned with the work that I do every single day in the city of New Orleans and have done. So while I know you all have focused very heavily on the 30, which I don't agree with that amount, 30,000 in terms of travel, uh, expenses there, when you think about the return on that investment, hundreds of millions of dollars that we're now talking about because they're real, that justifies, in my opinion, the work that has been done. But as it relates to it, I will deal with that accordingly relative to the city attorney and my CAO, but I'll continue to stay focused, I'll continue to do the work, and I'll continue to meet my personal needs relative to keeping me sane, keeping me with the peace of mind, and my ability to do this work. Because if anyone can do it, everyone would do it. But there's a burden that I carry, and I have carried for this community and for this city that I would say huh, no other leader has had to face and not only embrace. And so with that, you know, um, I'll continue to do my job and show up every single day. So thank you all again so much. Thank you.